last night, the in-season tournament's on, and I, I, I'd, like to, I'd like to tell you that I'm really excited about the in-season tournament. I'm not. Uh, I'd like to tell you that it's, uh, it's coming to an end. I'm happy about that. But I've got to tell you, LeBron James last night took it to another level, Jack. Uh, I mean, here's a guy, 37 years old. The Lakers are going to Vegas for the semifinal. He played, and he was the only guy to play more than 40 minutes as, as they beat uh, Phoenix to get to the next level in the in-season tournament. What more can this guy do? It's amazing. Well, he's actually had his birthday coming up in the near future. So uh, the calendar is going to turn on him another year. Uh, no, he's uh, – for a guy to be doing this at this age – uh, I think it speaks volumes about his commitment to fitness and uh, how dedicated, how in love with the game he is uh, to keep that up. You know, when you look at a guy like that, and John, we've seen in all sports, well, all, all the fame and fortune that comes with it, a lot of times drives a wedge uh, into your ability to stay uh, grounded and stay focused, right? And, you know, it's not only how much you handle failure, it's how you handle success. And I give him a lot of credit. Uh, he's got a lot of other things going on in his life now. He's reached that point where uh, he's an iconic uh, worldwide, world-known figure, and yet his uh, dedication and love for the sport that he plays is still at an incredible high. I mean, I, I marvel at the guy, uh, and I, I just think it's great. I, I, I was in tuned into that game last night watching him and Kevin Durant, who will both be first time, first ballot Hall of Famers when it's all said and done. And I just marvel. I mean, KD, what is he, 35 right now? Uh, and he's had some serious injuries. And, and to look at LeBron and what he's doing at his age, uh, you know, it speaks as well to the training methods and the technology that we have today, but it also speaks more importantly to the dedication that he has. I'm, I'm always curious because, um, you know, in, in, in the game that you watch a little bit that I love uh, in, in hockey, the game has changed physically. You know, Con Connor McDavid, who is the greatest player in, in hockey right now, Connor McDavid has never faced true clutching and grabbing that we saw guys like Gretzky, Lafleur, Gilbert Perrault face. The game changed. It's not, it's, even though it's, a, it, it, it's still physical, it's not as physical as it once was. It, it, has basketball changed? Yes, oh, definitely. I, you know, I think when you look at the style of play now and uh, in terms of being able to put your hand on somebody on the perimeter, uh, and kind of a direct a player. Uh, you know, you look at Steph Curry, if he played in the 80s versus now. Now, Steph Curry is a fabulous player. He would be a great player in any area. He's the greatest shooter I've ever seen because he can do, he can do it at the most elite level, both on the catch and on the bounce. Uh, yet his game, would, he would have to be uh, physically bigger and stronger to survive some of it. Uh, compared to now. So, uh, yeah, no, I think there's no doubt that the game is different, but I think it's better. I think, uh, you know, here here in Canada, we have a, a two-time MVP in Steve Nash, and I think he was at the beginning stages of when uh, the game changed quite a bit and allowed uh, more free play, free-flowing play, and I really think it helped his game, and I help, it helped uh, – make the NBA that much more entertaining. And, you know, it's interesting. Uh, I think Tom Brady, he might be the greatest quarterback we've seen. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, he signed a huge uh, TV deal with Fox. And he obviously, who doesn't get to take a sabbatical in this business? He obviously gets to take a sabbatical before he even starts. And then he goes off on this cranky cane waving rant about you know the quality of today's NFL, and I look at it, and he's a great, great player. He benefited a lot from the rules changes sure uh, that the that the NFL put in place. He won Super Bowls, and he benefited uh, now in his future career from uh, what the rules did for him 
and more importantly, that you couldn't breathe on him and yeah. you couldn't breathe on his receivers. So to me, I, the way I look at it is I, I just think that uh, we need to celebrate players in whatever era they play in. And uh, I'm, I'm a big believer that, you know, everyone gets too caught up in the good old days, the good old days. In my opinion, I watch the guys we have playing in the NBA right now. These are the good old days. These guys are amazing. And in any era, they would be great players. Now, obviously, they would have to uh, change their style of play. But great players would do that. If Gretzky played this era, he'd be amazing. And if Connor McDavid played 20 years ago, he'd figure it out. Yeah. And if LeBron played the 80s, he'd figure it out. And if Bob McAdoo or Bernard King or Walt Frazier, whoever played this era, they'd all figure it out. They're that good. Well, it, it, the two guys that I, I, I would wonder how their lives would be different if they played in 2023, were Chamberlain and Jabbar. Because really, I mean, Chamberlain never played with the three-point play. So the, the, the tactics of the game were different, right? It was, you got to go inside. You got to take advantage of the seven-footer. And then Jabbar kind of transcended both eras in, in so many ways. And yet, you know, how many guys play the game like they did and, and and the physical nature of the game. I'm going to take it another level. What happened? What happened if, if those guys were parachuted in, right. And, and you say, Oh my goodness, this is a unique person. This is a dominant low post player. Oh, and by the way, I am going to surround that person with great three point shooters because those guys played an era where we didn't have the line or that, or it wasn't respected uh, mm -hmm. in terms of distance shooting and spacing. Imagine if Kareem had three point shooters around him in today's game. And he was a, he was a low post player and he actually had a coach. They knew how to coach low post play. Imagine if Will Chamberlain had a coach that knew how to coach post play and had three point shooters around him they might even be better than what they were as crazy as it sounds. So uh, yeah, it, it, it's fascinating to think about all the different dynamics that go with that. Um, the, the issue now is if Kareem were 16 years old and playing ball in New York city and uh, the, all that post skill would probably be coached out of him, and he'd be dribbling the ball up the court, shooting threes and the same with Will. Right. Have you seen Wembyama yet? I have. I've seen him on television. I have not seen him in person. Yeah. I have the. I have the next Raptor game. We play them February tenth. Uh, I think it is or the tenth or the twelfth in Toronto. So I'll have that game. I have not seen him in person yet. I have seen Chet Holmgren uh, from Ooh. Oklahoma City Thunder, and I loved him. I did the game in Montreal that the uh, Thunder played there. And as much as I love Shea Gilgis Alexander and Lou Dort, both Canadians, wonderful players, I was just as excited to see Chet Holmgren. I think he's the rookie of the year. Everyone's talking about Victor, but Holmgren obviously played a year at Gonzaga. He's a tremendous young player as well uh, with immense talent and skill. And Webinyana, you know, I watch him. He's, uh, you know, obviously he's not, his team isn't very good. It's going to take some time, but he's got a great coach to play for. He'll figure it out. Um, you know, I, I kind of look at him and go, man, what would Ralph Sampson have looked like uh, right. if he, you know, so, but I'm really excited about both of these guys. The, the key thing for me in looking at them is how, how I just don't understand how they're going to stay healthy. I mean, their bodies, I mean, and Holmgren has it, let's face it. Um, it, it I, you just wonder the stress and strain of a of an 82 game schedule the physical play of the nba how do how can these guys that are freaks of nature how are they going to stay healthy because so many don't no you're right i i do think that in this era more than any other uh they they have the best chance of being able to do that because it isn't as physical as it used to be right uh, and I think the training methods are at the best level they've ever been at. 
So uh, to me, I think they have the best chance they'll ever have. Now, whether that happens or not, only time will tell if they can hold up. But uh, so far, so good. Knock wood. I mean, I, I think both young men have, have done a, a great, great job. And uh, I'm like super impressed with it. And um, they are fascinating talents to watch. And uh, that's that's kind of my point. You know, you think about a guy like uh, Will Chamberlain, who was a sensation high school player in Philadelphia with the University of Kansas and obviously his great professional career, you know, with his immense physical talent, what would he have been in today's era in terms of the coaching that he would have received and been able to do? And you look at these two kids and they have, they can do it all. 